Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 65. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have uh, Jean-Jean Francois. He's the author of international best-selling book, Messe Manager. JG has built his first company from 1,000 credit card loan to five offices. Hello Jean-Jean. Hello, how are you? I'm okay. I know the clan is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your online business? Take us right up to the last job or business before you're online. Yeah, perfect. Well, uh, you know, my story started in the early 2000s. My, uh, my father got very sick, and uh, I was called into the hospital one day. Uh, and the doctors told me that they weren't sure if he was going to make it through uh, the night. So, you know, I was faced with a very difficult decision as a young man. I wasn't even 20 years old at the time. And uh, I had to decide uh, how I wanted to live the rest of my life because I wasn't going to have sort of my, my best friend with me. And I wasn't sure if my dad was going to make it. So that night I made some decisions. I wanted to I, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be someone who created jobs, not had a job. I wanted to have multiple companies and I wanted to serve uh, at a higher purpose in this world. And uh, so I made the decision that night that I would do whatever it took to, to, to accomplish those uh, goals. And uh, luckily, my dad did make it through that night. And today he's, uh, he's uh, the, as healthy as, uh, as can be. Uh, but, you know, it was from that starting place. I was at that time only 19 years old. Uh, I had uh, I was a student at university. I was completely, completely broke. And I only had one thousand dollars left on my credit card. So that was the quote unquote starting capital I had was a thousand dollars. And I built that into um, my first business, which was uh, providing corporate wellness solutions. Uh, we built that from a thousand dollar credit card. Uh, all the way up to five offices. We had 30 employees, and then I built that into a. Uh, f- uh, and then I built and sold six other companies uh, before the age of 30. So uh, today I'm the CEO and the founder of uh, the one of the world's fastest growing book publishing companies called Black Card Books. And we have 135 employees all over the world. Wow. Ooh, what's the background, Georgie? Okay. <laughs> Why do you do what you do? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, my, my purpose is, I believe entrepreneurship is the tool uh, that that families and people can use in order to change their legacy and change the direction of their family tree. Uh, you know, so many people are stuck in in habits and, and you know, I mean, if, if your dad was a baker, if your grandfather was a baker and your father was a baker, well, you're, you're, they're going to want you to be a baker. And, uh, and I think entrepreneurship is, is a phenomenal tool, as a phenomenal avenue for people to take control of their life and to build the life they really dream of. Wow. How did you achieve success so quickly before the age of 30? Well, I have worked a lot of hard work. You know, they, they say uh, you got to put in 10,000 hours to become an expert. And, uh, you know, I work seven days a week, 18 hours a day for, uh, you know, for the, I've been doing that for the last 15 years. And I still work that much because I absolutely love what I do. I don't have to work anymore, but I, I love to do what I do. So I, uh, and I and I feel like I'm making a difference in this world. So uh, when you do what you love and you have a lot of uh, impact and you have a lot of influence and you're you're a you're able to move people along and help people set off light bulbs. I mean, it's so motivating. It's so exciting that uh, there's no reason to stop. Okay. You said you work 18 hours a day. I know a few friends of mine who have like three to four jobs. They're doing like 30 hours. Uh, how is this one working? Are they doing wrong jobs? Is it something they are doing that it's not working? Well, I think it depends on their objective. I mean, if you're if their objective is to become financially free, uh, working at a job is, is uh, one of the worst ways to become financially free. Anytime you're trading time for money, uh, you are not, it's very difficult to get financially free when you're trading time for money. 
So, uh, so I would say if, they, if, if their objective is financial freedom and they're working three, four jobs, uh, I would say they need to find a better way. You, you, trading time for money is a terrible way to be financially free. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's put man aside. How do you know you are successful? Well, I, don't, I think success is, uh, I don't think success is a destination. I think it's a journey. I think it's, uh, you know, it's, I'll give you a perfect example. I was training with my physical trainer the other day at the gym and, you know, an important lesson, and this, this lesson applies to what, you know, what, what people call success, but as I was uh, progressing in my workout, him and I were reminiscing of where I started versus where I am today, and he made the point that, you know, I'm never going to get to a destination as it gets to my body and as it gets to physically working out, because every time I master an exercise, every time I master the art of doing push-ups or bench press, or lat pulls down, or whatever you want. Anytime I master that, he, as the trainer, either just ups the weight or changes the exercise. So there's never, uh, you can master an exercise, but the the process of of becoming physically fit is not a destination, it's an ongoing evolution, It's it's a journey. And it's the same thing with success. You know, what I originally set out to do, my original goals, I've achieved those. So from a destination perspective, I've achieved those. But the minute you get there, you have to set new goals and go to the next level because I believe that if you're not growing, you're dying. So you need to have goals all the time in order to keep you moving. Um, can anyone who be an entrepreneur or some people are more cutty for it than others? Uh, definitely. Some people are uh, more better at it than uh, being an entrepreneur is, is like a skill. I mean, anybody can play basketball, but only a certain amount of people become good enough to join the NBA and become a professional. It's the same with being an entrepreneur, except the difference is is that there are different levels of being an entrepreneur. You could be a great entrepreneur and run a business of $200,000 and be very happy, and that's excellent. But just because you can run a business of $200,000 a year in annual sales does not mean you, you uh, you have the natural talent to take it to a million or 10 million or 100 million. And I've gone through this in my stages as we've built these companies from what started to be just small businesses and, and very small businesses with one employee or no employees to now having this, you know, being uh, partners with Jerry Robert uh, and being the CEO of Blackheart Books and having over 135 employees all around the world. I had to change my skill set. I had to become a different type of entrepreneur as I've grown in this journey. So uh, I think anybody could uh, be an entrepreneur. I don't think everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. However, you know, being an entrepreneur is not, it's not for everybody. It's not, uh, uh, I think in today's day and age, uh, in 2016, 2017, there's a lot of people, uh, that think being an entrepreneur is the cool thing to do. They think it's the career of choice. Uh, but you know, I would, I would advise people to take a real hard look because being an entrepreneur takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. You have to pay the price to become a successful entrepreneur. And that price is often, uh, it could be, you know, putting, it could be leisure time, it could be social time, it could be family time, you know. To become a successful entrepreneur, you have to be willing to pay the price. And that goes for all success. That's just not, that's not just entrepreneurship. For any success, if you're not willing to pay the price, you're not gonna get there, period. Why are you so damn passionate about your business concepts? Well, I think, you know, right, the Black Heart Books and, and what we do is so exciting because, you know, we show small business owners how to use a book as a marketing tool. We really provide them with the unfair advantage, if you will, to build and grow their business because using a book as a marketing tool is a phenomenal way to grow a business. And, as, as I built and sold seven different companies over the last 15 years, I've tried all the different tools and I can tell you having a book as a marketing tool and you being the author of a book is essentially an unfair advantage. So I'm privileged and I'm excited because I'm really providing uh, entrepreneurs, I'm providing families that are trying to create a better life for themselves. I'm providing them with the secret weapon, the tool that they need to take themselves and their business to the next level and that's exciting. 
Do you have mentors? Absolutely. I have lots of mentors. I have a mentor and a coach for every aspect of my life. Um, I think I think getting a mentor is well, I, I know for sure it is one it is the fastest way to win. If you want to win in life and win in business and win in any part of your life, then you should get a mentor that has the results that you're looking for in that part of your life. So you should have a financial mentor, you should have a business mentor if you're in business, you should have a health mentor. Uh, you should have, you may have a relationship mentor. Now, the thing with mentors is not everybody needs to necessarily, I have some mentors that don't even know they're mentoring me. They're, they're mentoring me from afar. I'm just watching what they're doing and I am modeling and modeling their behavior. I have other mentors that I talk to every single day and Jerry Robert is a perfect example of that. Uh, he's been my, my business mentor, uh, for the last, I've been business partners with him now for uh, seven, eight years. And, uh, you know, I talk to Jerry every single day. We do business together. Uh, we've become best friends. And, um, and I think it's the fastest way to win for people to get a mentor. If somebody doesn't have a mentor and they're trying to do business, it doesn't matter even if they're not a business person doesn't, you know, I think the fastest way to win is to get a mentor and do what he or she says. And that's the key right there. Patience is do what he or she says. That's critical. Okay. What is the most valuable thing your mentor has told you? Well, uh, I think one has so many things. Uh, the first one that jumps to mind, and it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a saying that I've adopted because of my mentor, Jerry. And it goes like this. When it gets tough for everybody else, it gets just about right for me. And... You know, that's been a very, you know, when you're growing, when you're growing businesses, when you're, when you're achieving success and you're, you're driving really hard for your passions, you're bound to hit, you're bound to hit problems. You have to hit problems. You have to encounter challenges for you to grow as a person to be able to achieve your goals. And the only way to achieve your goals is to run into these problems and run into these challenges. So adopting the mindset that when it gets tough for everybody else, it gets just about right for me means I'm always ready for that challenge. I'm always ready for that next battle. And that's a really important lesson. And I mean, he's taught me so much, uh, but that's one really important one there. And, and back to mentors for a second, patience, if I may. Um, you know, I think too many people want mentors to teach them their way. So let's just say I'm mentoring you. Uh, you, the natural inclination for a person being mentored is they want to be taught their way, but it is not the mentor's job as a mentee. It is your job to, to do what the mentor says, not to, not to fight with them, not to argue with them. You have to bring energy to the mentor. You have to make it easy for the mentor to mentor you. Uh, and that's a really important lesson. I think too many people, I, I have a lot of young, young people and old people, and probably the older people are even more difficult because they're more set in their ways. But when you, when you approach a mentor, you have to make it easy for them. And the way to do that is to bring energy to the conversation, listen to their feedback, and most importantly, do what they tell you and then report back to them and show them you're doing it. Wow. Okay. What did you find that you had to share? What other obstacles do you jump over to make your dream really come true? I think I've jumped every single obstacle <laughs> out there. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, so there's, and, and that's probably, you know, I just put out a blog post uh, about this yesterday uh, about problems and challenges because there's too many people there and, and it's, it's, it goes for everybody, but everybody wants to avoid problems. Everybody wants to avoid challenges. But the fact is, is that you cannot get to where you want to go without going through those challenges because those challenges is what grow you uh, to be the person you need to become in order to achieve those goals or whatever uh, objectives you've set. So, I think that obstacles, you know, and over the last 15 years, I mean, this has been a, you know, 15 year journey for me and I'm just getting started um, is, you know, now I, now I look forward to these obstacles. And, and when I, when I'm, when I'm in the middle of an obstacle, when I'm in the middle of a challenge, I really dig my heels in and I get excited about it because I know that on the other side of this challenge, on the other side of this obstacle is the next level of success. So I'm always excited about uh, challenges, and I've had every challenge out there. 
I could sit here and tell you patients stories about how it was difficult to make payroll. I remember one time, for example, I came home with a coffee and it's funny, I'm actually have a cup of coffee on my desk and it was this very, it's funny because it was this very cup of coffee. I'm from Canada. So we have this coffee chain in Canada called Tim Hortons and it's a a small, a medium cup of coffee from Tim Hortons costs a dollar twenty. And uh-huh. I remember one time, I came home with a medium Tim Horton coffee, and my wife and I had the biggest fight because we couldn't afford a one dollar and twenty cent cup of coffee. We, that's how tight the money was. We were in debt over our, our eyeballs, and um, and and today. Uh, not only am I able to afford the cup of coffee, I could buy the whole store if I wanted to, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've been through so many struggles and so many stories. And everybody always used to tell me when I was going through those successful entrepreneurs, my mentors of the time used to tell me, just keep going. It will be worth it. And I remember thinking it's easy for them to tell me that because they've already made it. But now that I'm on the other side, and and it's not like I don't – my problems are, didn't go away. They're just bigger now. They're just bigger challenges and bigger problems. I've just learned to handle them differently. And because my mentors used to tell me, just keep going. It's going to be worth it. It's better on the other side. I used to think that's easy for them to say they're already on the other side. But now that I'm on the other side, I now find myself telling people this all the time. Just keep going because I know – and what I didn't know then that I know now – is that you need to – those problems are there to grow you. Those problems are there to open you up and to make you the type of person that can achieve the next level of success. You have to go through those problems. So now I get excited about them. Wow. Okay. Let's talk about your business as a whole. <clears throat> Tell us all about it. Well, what, I mean, the, the main business that takes the most – I have four businesses now, but the main one that takes all of my time and the one I'm – uh, and I'm passionate about everything we do, but uh, Black Art Books is an unbelievable revolutionary book publishing company. And, and everyone listening, you know, I urge them to go to publishabookandgrowrich.com and go look at our event list. You know, we do over 100 boot camps every single year, and we teach small business owners, the people listening to this very podcast, we teach small business owners how to use a book as a marketing tool and how to catapult their sales and catapult their income and, and boost their profits using a book as a marketing tool and like I said earlier patients there's no better tool there's no better secret weapon unfair advantage than publishing your own book Um, and we've helped over the last 25 years we've helped uh, black card books has helped over 3 million people with this information and we are currently publishing over a thousand authors under our label black card books so I urge people go to publish your book and grow rich uh, dot com and come to one of our boot camps. You'll be warmly received. You will learn amazing techniques to grow your business. It's really going to take you, your business, your mindset, your sales, and your profits to the next level. Is this for people who are already authors or this or any beginner can come to no, your publishing yeah, any, company? Anybody who has a business and wants to grow that business, that's who's ideal for us. You do not have to be a PhD in science you, or, or a PhD in anything. You don't have to be a PhD in English. You don't even have to be a good speller. We're going to show you systems in order to pull this book out of you. And this is, by the way, we focus patients and our expertise is in non-fiction. So non-fiction how-to books, so business books. Um, and, you know, this. so this isn't about writing the next Harry Potter series. This isn't about fiction. This is about nonfiction how-to books. Uh, like my book, it's called Messy Manager, How Small Business Owners Can Triple Their, uh, Double Their Sales and Triple Their Profits. So it's made for, for people to read. It's made for people to take action. And it's a phenomenal business building tool. So I urge people, publish a book in growrich.com. Go check it out. There's great videos there. It'll explain everything. We do 100 boot camps all around the world. So it doesn't matter where your listeners are listening from. Whether it's Europe or Asia or Australia or Canada or the U.S., it doesn't matter. South Africa, we cover all of it. Even India, Asia, Malaysia, Singapore, we do them all. Africa? Yep, we do Africa as well. (laughs) How could you forget Africa? (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. So, Kilan, there will be more from Georgie in a moment. If you are finding Georgie's journey interesting and you are ready to hear more, come and listen to the full version of the interview at onlinesuccessjourney.com. If you are read at online successjourney.com click on part 2 of Joji Journey and you'll get lots on tips of how to get your book out there and publish it and use it as a, a marketing tool and don't forget you can access all other online success journey interviews while you are there at the site okay that's a wrap plan remember success is a journey join me patience and joji in part 2 at online successjourney.com this is not the end of the journey We hope you've enjoyed listening to part 1 and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form by clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on ratings and reviews, then write a review. On behalf of patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.